Welcome to the show today. Today I have Thomas Meyer with me, who is the Country Managing Director of Accenture Switzerland and is also involved with the Accenture Digital in Germany, Austria, Switzerland and Russia. And uh, he's basically in charge of that organization as well. So I'm very, very excited to talk to you today, dive a little bit into your story and uh, see where we're getting at today. So Thomas, tell me a little bit more about who is Thomas and uh, what's the story that got you to where you are today? Uh, who is Thomas? Um, um, first of all, I'm, uh, I'm Swiss. Uh, I'm now based in Zurich, but I, I grew up in the, in the heart of Switzerland, Canton Schwyz, in a very small town of Steinen. Uh, and I actually grew up on a, on a farm. So in, in my youth, I was asked to help out on a farm with, uh, with my uncle, who was a cow dealer. Uh, and I had to nurture the cows and, and, and uh, you know, basically before school, after school, uh, work on the farm and, and do whatever is required to maintain this uh, thing. And this uh, up until the moment where he decided to sell the whole thing because the high road was built, which cost his land. And, you know, thereafter, uh, I started to focus on school. <laughs> So uh, uh, basic education uh, in the canton of Schwyz, uh, I went to the gymnasium, Kollege Schwyz, uh, is, uh, used to be a Catholic school there, uh, led by Jesuits, uh, which uh, gave me actually a lot of input, uh, yeah, but uh, was not, you know, I, I didn't really like to go to school. It's uh, my passion, uh, my passion was working, I always worked uh, next to school. During vacation, I worked uh, on, on construction sites, I worked as a Stuckateur, uh, so you know, I was scratching some angels in churches, and I, I liked I liked working. Uh, past the uh, past the Matura Type C, so um, uh, natural sciences, um, I always had an interest for that, and then uh, started working. Uh, very early on, it was uh, very important for me to be not dependent on anything. Uh, I don't like to be dependent on anything, so not dependent on my parents not dependent on drugs, on alcohol, on anything. I, I just don't like that, you know. Uh, you should enjoy life, but not, you know, have it under, under control and be, uh, be the one that drives it uh, yourself. So after I, my initial plan was to become an architect. I like construction. I wanted to become an architect. And at that time, in the, in the late uh, 80s, then there was a crisis in Switzerland with regards to construction and, you know, future didn't look that bright so I thought mm, maybe not a good idea uh, but then I had no plan B and so uh, I start instead of going to university I started working and I worked at a, at a bank uh, in, in Zug for a year uh, there I, uh, I also had lunch at the same place in a uh, which was run by a mother of a good friend of mine and you know we, we played some uh, uh, cards uh, after lunch all the time and she and her best friend, they consulted me and said, Tommy, uh, the way you are, the way you work, you have to go to university. You need to, because you have a bright career in front of you, so you have to go to university. I said, okay. <laughs> and I go, what should I do? And they said, I'll go to St. Gallen. And so I went to St. Gallen to look at it, uh, saw that and thought, okay, let's do that. Uh, I started in St. Gallen. I picked always the subjects there where there were the, you know, the, uh, as few students as possible. So I didn't want to be in the big rooms. I wanted to be in the small rooms to have an opportunity to, to, you know, to exchange with the professor and with, uh, with the peers. So I studied organizational theory, organizational psychology, uh, and, uh, and management of organization eventually. Um, and did it in the four years. So um, the minimum time was four years. So I wanted to get out of it as quickly as possible. And then was looking for a job um, and, you know, uh, had various options, but, um, uh, but decided for, at that time, Arthur Anderson, uh, Arthur Anderson Management Information Consulting Division, which is the organization that I'm still with. So I'm now in my 31st year in that organization. It has changed dramatically over the years, and, uh, and, but I'm still there. Uh, so that's the professional life. Uh, besides that, uh, I'm married. I have five boys uh, from two marriages. The oldest one is 28. The youngest one is seven. Actually, today, this afternoon, I'm going to uh, celebrate his birthday party um, and uh, uh, live now in, uh, in Zollikon, close to Zurich, um, uh, even though I still have my house, my parents' house in Stein and Canton Schwyz, but my now wife uh, was very clear. She said, very nice house, but, you know, I will never live there. I grew up here in this area. And so for me, happy wife uh, gives a happy man. So 
I decided it was an easy decision that, uh, that we moved to Zurich. And I'm working here since, uh, since a long time, so it's uh, quite natural. But, you know, but, Love that story. Okay. Thanks for diving into it. I mean, one thing that astonished me, like when we chatted the first time, you said, you know, it's like, it's my anniversary next month. Uh, I'm going to be 30 years with the company. And uh, it's very rare these days, right, that you come across people who uh, so long with the same organization. And I'm always curious about that, specifically in your case, um, because you've been so, so long with this organization. What is the, what is the thing that keeps you um, at, at the organization? Like, I mean, there's, you know, everybody urges for change and, you know, some, some, you know, adventures and excitements and outside, you know, the grass is always greener over there and, you know, these kinds of things. What is it that really engages you? I mean, I mean, for, first of all, I always have these opportunities and people are coming to you and say, why don't you join over or do this or do that? Um, and I've always been looking at those things. I've never said no, uh, just from the outside. I've always been looking at those things. Uh, however, I've always come to the conclusion that you know, uh, it, it's hard to find a better place. I have so many degrees of freedom of what I want to do. Um, I, I'm, I have the pleasure to, to be working in an organization since, that since I, I joined it has the cu- courage to continue to change itself and quite dramatically from time to time, which makes it very exciting and, of course, not the same organization. So it, I mean, it's, it's very different. And then uh, uh, I, I made a partner at that time. We were still a partner a partnership in in the year 2000. And you know, a couple of months later, we made an IPO. So I became a shareholder of of, of what today is Accenture. Uh, and in 2003, became the company managing director. So actually, more than half of my career, I have been responsible for the business in Switzerland, which is a huge privilege. Uh, it's a huge privilege to to be able to develop. Uh, a practice uh, and make it more relevant for for the local clients for the people here locally uh, and try to develop this business um, and as we are in the in the professional services company with consulting technology and, and operations business there's so many things um, which every day are new and which is the energy uh, that I that I need um, in addition to that I, I the firm they give me all kinds of freedom to do additional things. So you know, I, I'm the president of uh, Stolzbahnen, you know, which is my hobby, and we just launched uh, the steepest funicular in the world uh, last December, uh, you know, a 14-year project for me, myself. Uh, I, you know, I was able to establish all kinds of uh, relationships and participations in, in relevant uh, organizations in Switzerland, uh, and it, it you know, just allows me to learn so many new things basically every day and work with all kinds of different people young people old people you know designers programmers business analysts strategists what have you um uh, that is just really really exciting i can't really imagine that presently on on what uh, what could be more interesting i i love i mean the the things that you talked about is sort of like a, a holistic um um, view of what most people consider, you know, exciting, I would say, you know, there's, there's change, but also there's, there's partly, you know, uh, stability, um, there's freedom, there's personal freedom, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a variety in terms of people you work with, in terms of projects and engagements, the company changed over the years. And, you know, you, you basically said it's not the same company at all anymore, changed quite a few times. So that also makes things really exciting. So it's very interesting, yeah. like to hear that um, perspective. Now from a, leadership side of things you're running a large organization you're in charge of a very large organization and um what i'm always curious about curious about is how do you run an organization as big as that and run it successfully and still stay sane at the same time yeah well first uh, i would probably not say i am leading the organization i would say i'm responsible for the organization for me uh, uh, quite a difference we have we have so many bright people. They know what you know. They know uh, what they want to do. So I think my job is to help them, to enable them, to allow them to to be doing what they want. Obviously, you know, within the boundaries of what Accenture believes is is a strategy. You know, we have a, a strong focus on 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 the G two thousands of the world, so the largest two thousand companies uh, by market capitalization. 
um, you know, the region that I'm working in, so in Germany, Switzerland, Austria has uh, 155 of them, and a third of them are located in Switzerland. So it's a huge client base. And it's actually, um, you know, it's actually many of our people, I believe, uh, is, is a good story for them personally, because, you know, even though they're young, uh, over time, they have families like I have, and, you know, and I try to, to have discussions with them to convince them what my field rouge in my, my life is, which is my five sons at the end, my family, where I would like to contribute a little bit that those five sons have a, a future in this country. Now, if they want to go somewhere else, fine. No. Can't influence that too much, but I can influence to a certain degree what's happening here, together obviously with our clients and all the other stuff that I'm uh, that I'm doing, and that is that is what keeps me, you know, what, what, what keeps me what keeps me running. And I try to find people, you know, around me that somehow share uh, some of these beliefs. Obviously, not everybody, uh, but many. So the the way I you know I, I I I if you like run, even though you know I. So hard, hard word for uh, to describe what, what what we're doing is by you know trying to have those right people in the right positions you know, and, and and help them as is, or enable them to do what you know, what they like and in a way protect them from I mean, in many times from from the rest of our organization or or help uh, help them to influence our organization in the right direction. Many you new know, right things actually come from Switzerland. We have a very well educated market. We have very, you know, very demanding clients. We have a very high culture of quality and work and ethics. And that has, uh, you know, has quite an impact actually, even in a, in a large organization as we are, but that there's a, a good opportunity to also influence this, uh, this tanker, uh, you know, in a, in a positive way, not overest uh, no, overestimate the, our impact, but, um, it is it is a good opportunity. I, I love how clear you are about you know the why behind why you get up every morning and go to work and do what you do and I mean it's so much grounded. And I mean I'm just curious like in the day to day craziness of things, how do you stay connected to that you know bigger picture? Because like it is so key to be effective and to really you know not go crazy in in, in an ever changing world. How do you stay connected to that why? you know, that's that purpose basically on a daily basis. Is there something specific you do? Is there, is it more about a way? Obviously it took a, it took, took a while to get there if you like. Uh, but again, uh, through, through my various roles that I have, you know, inside the firm and outside the firm. Uh, uh, and I think I, I do have an ability to connect dots. So, you know, that is something, you know, whenever I am in a discussion, even in a discussion with you right now and the question of, you know, my brain starts traveling uh, and daydreaming, and you know, I have lots of ideas. Sometimes too many, uh, lots of ideas, and 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 you know, and and they're always grounded in, in what I what I just said. And and uh, I think through time, when you when you when you work uh, so long time in our business, which is you know we're in the clients business, clients first. You know we're in people business, so you know, people first. Um, uh, and and you live through so many different things, you know, from very positive to very negative. You have all kinds of emotions that you can imagine. Um, obviously, you know, in, in this long time, it somehow gives you a certain calmness, at least in my case. Of you know, there's not too many things which I have not somehow experienced, and 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 that gives me, in a way, a, a trust. Uh, in in myself that I you know I, I know what I want to do I I, I you know I I'm, I have lots of interesting discussions with people which help me to continue to learn and which just gives me the uh, gives me the the power to to be in a way uh, uh, you know calm re remain calm even in the most hectic situations and some people would say I'm calm other would say I'm cold because you know. It may it may look that I'm not reacting too much uh, to things, it's, but I, I really had the the, the privilege to uh, to live through so many things professionally and, and privately. Even though if there have been very hard, it somehow gives you a, a certain level of, of, of calmness. And that's that's I mean that's that's powerful, you know, um, being at this place that 
you know, of trusting and that confidence and, um, you know, that also having the awareness that every experience, no matter if good or bad, sort of like builds that trust in yourself, sort of builds that stack of experiences that you can look back on and say, well, it's not so many things I haven't experienced yet in that sense. So that's very powerful. One, one thing on the leadership side that, you know, is very often a topic in, in any kind of organization, big or small, is this scarcity of resources. If we only had more salespeople, if we only had more developers, if we only had more hours in the day, if yeah. we only have, you know, in, in general, with yourself, but also with your organization, how do you deal with this topic? Is there... You know, it, again, we're in the professional services business and that, that's a people business. So you either have the right people and then businesses come in, if you like, or you don't have them. Um, not everybody has the same you know, belief. So there's all those that believe, you know, first you have to have the business and then you get the people. I'm the other way around. And, and I found enough people in Accenture who have exactly the same belief. So I think what this requires is courage and trust in yourself that you know, by having the right people, you, know, you, you, you can manage through. And again, you will have tough times. Sometimes you have maybe too many people and you know, tough decisions need to be made. But I think it's still a better approach than the other. I mean, people would say it's an easy problem to have if you, if, you, if you need more people and you don't have them, but it's still a problem. Uh, and and particularly in in, in in nowadays where I think individuals and individual characteristics and, and, and beliefs and attitudes become much more important again in our business than maybe the past 15, 16 years where we have gone through a industrialization phase, I would uh, say in some in some parts of our business. Um, you know, it, it, the, the belief is not only my belief, but uh, of many of my of my colleagues that you need to have the right people early on in order to continue uh, to to build uh, practices and to to build business. So it's people first, and then the business will follow us. You know, not the other way around. Yeah, it's a very interesting philosophy because in and of it, of itself, it's sort of like uh, you know a belief that not not eliminates but very much limits this um conversation around uh, resource scarcity and lack of resources because you look you sort of look at it from the other side you know it's it's uh, sometimes it's like the chicken and egg problem what comes first like the right people business or whatever but uh when you sort of like stay in this grounded place when you say well people come first you know you have to write people on board first um that way it makes things a lot easier because you're not sort of like chasing um, always after things and you're chasing your tail, but you're, you're, you're first establishing something that in and of itself works to bring business on board and works to bring more people on board because they're, you know, they're more excited they talk about it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And scarcity of people, you know, if you look at it from that side and forces you to focus and focus is probably uh, one of the most uh, elementary things in life. That, uh, that somehow you have to get there, whatever it is. Yeah? But I think you're, you're typically better if you focus on very few things as opposed to try to do everything uh, and that not correctly. So, you know, yes, we, you know, there might be client situations or there is a market here. And, you know, fortunately, there's a market here which is, which is a good, as it's a demanding market, but it's a good market. And we could maybe even grow faster than we did grow in the last, uh, whatever, 20 years or so. But I'm happy enough. And, and you know, you, and, and if, 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 if pe people are scarce, and it's also in our case, and you, uh, but you need first to have the right people and then things start to fall into the place. And it just, it, 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 it requires that you focus. So if you, you know, if you ask, you know, going back to your initial question on how do you run this, is helping people actually to focus as opposed to do to, too many things in the business. I'm very happy if people do other stuff outside of business to have the right balance and, you know, and, and stay grounded. Uh, but when it comes to business, I think there is a, a certain level of focus is, is, is very important. I agree. Yeah, I mean, the focus is, uh, is, is, is key and, and having an organization and, and, and supporting them to stay focused, I think is even a, bit, a bigger key to that. So let's transition a little bit into the present right now. 
What are some of the most exciting things for you today? Some of the things that you work on, some of the things that are happening right now. What are some of those that are most exciting? I mean, I turn to uh, to my role in, in Accenture Digital, which is uh, as an as an organization within Accenture, a kind of a change agent. And so we, we change the way on how we work with our clients, but we also have an impact on you know, on obviously on our clients themselves and their business. So it's it's really really exciting and then an element of that is that this has become the entity in Accenture which is very very active on the acquisition side and uh, you know just yesterday I, I, I was at in Hamburg uh, you know, and had a, a session with Mocha Vision it's a, a, an acquisition that we announced last week obviously I've been involved a little bit into that before uh, uh, but that's just one more. We acquired this year Sinnerjader in Germany. We have Octo uh, Technologies in Switzerland. We have B Group. We have Boomerang. Um, you know, and these are all new cultures, new people that are coming in uh, with very different backgrounds so sometimes, but all smart and very successful people. You know, uh, with you know big ears like that and holes in the ears, and but very smart people, and uh, and. That is probably what, what currently turns me on the most is to be able to work with these kinds of organizations which are very successful in, in their own turf. But they also see a need to join us to, to further drive their journey you know, and, and really feel a need also to join us. It's not just, you know, none of these guys joins us to make a lot of money. They join us to you know, further grow their business, which is very, very uh, Impressive if you talk to these guys or so great leaders there, um, and, and 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 that is just really really exciting. It's it's tough. I mean, it's a lot of work, all just you know, basic operational stuff and administrative stuff that needs to be done, which is just you know some, sometimes a pain. But at, uh, and then at the same time, it's it's really really interesting. It's just uh, very very exciting. But that's on the digital side. On, on the Swiss side, it's uh, uh, I'm 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 just very happy to see that how we how we develop in what we call hops. So uh, next to Zurich, Basel, Geneva, Bern, and maybe uh, as soon as at Ticino, um, you know, and and to see those local cultures develop, you know, the local uh, people that we hire into those hops, and, and and they work with their clients, and to just uh, just to see that an idea that uh, we developed 15 years ago really starts starts to work and, you know it's just if you like a pleasure to see that flowers that you planted once or even just you know little uh, things that you put into this uh, into the ground are now becoming real nice huge plants or trees which are strong themselves i love that i mean it, it seems to go all in this direction of culture a little bit even with you know switzerland as well with the different hops as well as with uh, accenture digital question there about the culture thing about the you know the emerger piece of it and, and the culture itself what is it that excites you about this what is it specifically it's the what we call the culture of cultures so we nurture different cultures, you know, and it goes a little bit into diversity. So many people look at diversity mainly as a male-female thing, which is obviously an issue that we that they're all working on and really tough one. But diversity is not only that. Uh, uh, cultural diversity, uh, uh, in, in its uh, largest uh, definition, is also exactly you know, what I'm experiencing right now. To to, you know, to accept that those people may have different values, may have different attitudes to work, may have different attitudes even to economic principles. Um, no, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just really, uh, yeah, it's, it's sometimes eye-opening. Uh, and, uh, and again, it helps me in, the, on, in the, my personal path to learn and, and see what, uh, what's working. And, uh, and, and we, we have come to the, I mean, I've, I've gone through other acquisitions, particularly in Switzerland, uh, in the early 2000s, which have not been very successful. I did a brutal integration approach and did see that you know, it doesn't really work. So we, we do have a little bit of a different approach, obviously different case by case by case, uh, because none of these organizations are, are similar or the same. Um, but we really nurture this culture of cultures. 
uh, it's a very interesting way of looking at it also from a diversity perspective. And I'm curious to hear your perspective on it. Um, like with merger and acquisition in terms of failing and succeeding, in your personal opinion, what do you feel makes or breaks an actual integration? I mean, there is a reason why those companies have been successful. And the make or break, I think, is if you are able to maintain the elements that made this company successful and add those elements, why this company at some point decided they don't want to be on their own anymore because they're lacking something which they don't have. And it, in, in almost all the cases, it means you have to create something new which didn't exist before. Uh, and I think that is the make or break. If you're able to, within a reasonable amount of time, to create this uh, or not. Yeah, that's very interesting. It's actually, you know, even the word integration now doesn't fit anymore because it's less of an integration. It's more of a multiplication where, you know, two organizations sort of like come together. Yes, they do integrate and merge, but at the end of the day, from a viewpoint, it's more about multiplying each other in a way yeah. that works very, very powerfully for both sides. I love that way of looking at M&A, where I think not many people do today, unfortunately. So it's definitely something to work on, especially in, in the startup world where, you know, very often your companies are bored for the passion, the vision, and, you know, lots of the other hard facts as well. But once that gets lost, which very often does, um, there's other trouble coming, <laughs> coming out of this. So um, talking a bit more about the future, um, in terms of the professional service business, in terms of digitalization, um, I mean, you have a very holistic view of digitalization in Switzerland, but also across um, Europe, across countries. Where do you see some of the most exciting things, maybe for, for you personally, but also for, um, for you know, the cons from a consumer perspective, from a business perspective, from an impact perspective, where do you see some of the most exciting things emerge over the next one, two, three, five years in digital? I mean, I mean obviously it has many, many facets. Um, I, mean, I mean, we typically tend to start at, you know, at the end who, who benefits the most from, from, from what's happening. And if there is no, not somebody benefiting from, from digitalization, it won't happen. So I'm a strong believer that, you know, it, it, technology and digitalization and innovation, in a way it's innovation, I don't like digitalization, as, you know, it's just as a single word. It's, it's about innovation, you know, you know, supported by huge technological events which are culminating in, in combination right now in a, in a phase that many call uh, uh, you know, the fourth evolution, uh, even though I think it's very evolutionary. Um, but if, if it, you start at the end, so it's, it's, it's us, it's us human beings that experience different ways on how we interact with our daily, you know, with, with, the, with the organizations that we interact the, on a daily basis. So the, the experience on how we buy, on how we shop, on how we live, on how we build, on how we, whatever we do, that experience is changing. And so, and, and, and I think that drives the whole thing. Um, and that requires many, many industries, not at the same pace, and, and, you know, organizations along the value chain in such industries to, to think about what is it that they actually want to provide and this experience to those people. So for us, a lot has to do with experience, design experience, you know, the changing of experience which then drives different services, different products, a need to collaborate all of a sudden, you know, across uh, with either within an industry or across the industry boundaries to be able to provide a certain, uh, you know, a certain service. Um, and, and, uh, and I think that is, that is, you know, what's, what's driving uh, uh, all of that. Along with that, uh, all in a, in an environment, which is, which people call the VUCA, you know, the, um, um, you know, uncertainty, complexity, volatility, ambiguity, it's not really clear. You know, we, we, we ourselves say, you know, the new applied, and you know, we want to rotate to the new. And everybody asks you, what is the new? And we basically say, well, let's find out together. 
uh, and create the new. We don't exactly what it is. All we know is it's not the old. Uh, so you know we have, we we do have to change. And and this environment where many things that we thought are given, you know, which nowadays are not given at all. So you know people would probably have. Ex- excluded an atomic war just two, three, four years ago. Nowadays, I think it's realistic that this may happen again. And, you know, everybody thought globalization is just going to continue, but we overall have to realize that fragmentation, digital fragmentation, national tendencies are back in. So, I mean, you cannot rely on stuff for years and years and years. Uh, so you cannot plan for years and years and years. So you have to, you have to deal with this uh, uncertainty and, and, and ambiguity and uh, the complexity, you know, along with those changing expectations, that's a huge challenge for organizations. That's particularly, I think, a huge challenge for large organizations like ourselves. Um, you know, many refer to them as dinosaurs, and you know, we are somehow, we are, we're somehow in a, you know, in a, in a relationship, if you like, with our clients to jointly manage these, these, uh, you know, th- these challenges. Um, in order to have a future, and then you know that brings me back to you know, why I'm still here because that's just really really interesting. You need a, you need a, thousands of startups in a country like Switzerland with hundreds of employees just to nurture you know our population. I don't think that's going to work. So I think we you know let let's be open and let's accept that we need the Nestles and Roche and the Vartis and you know, all of these big guys who are also you know changing themselves and and and. Uh, yeah, and and, and you know, I th- I see it as a huge task to to try to work with the, with these clients to help manage the future. I love the way you look at it. Very, as I said before, very holistically in terms of you know not like okay, we only need this this one. We don't need something like there's a, there's pretty much a place for um you know all kinds of organizations. They all have their own roles. They shouldn't interfere with each other's expertise, so to say, and 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 define roles in in the ecosystem. Um, but you're right. I mean, absolutely right. You know, we, we need the large organizations, we need the startups, we need all the different pieces in the middle to actually make it work and bind it together and actually have an ecosystem because there is no ecosystem with one type of group, right? There's not even an ecosystem yeah. with two types of groups. Only when all stakeholders come together and work towards a similar goal, that's an actual ecosystem. So I love how you also brought it back into the purpose. You know, at the end of the day, it's all about creating that brighter future, so to say, Um, for our children and I think that's what connects uh, with a lot of people you know these days because there is so much uncertainty in the world so much stuff right and uh, we can all make our dent um, in the future into the future Um, and I love the way you um, you know work at this every day for such a you know a long time already and you just keep at it and uh, I mean that's from from my perspective that's what I um look at people say visionaries that's sort of like what i'm what i mean when i say visionary it's having that vision it's not just about you know what there's what the business is has to be and things like that it's much more about the connected purpose to the actual society to actually what it means to be human and to a future that we can be proud of so i love what you shared and i uh, just want to say once again thank you so much uh, thomas for being here we're going to link to the sources like to accenture so people can find a bit more about what you guys are working on the exciting things that are going on uh your linkedin profile as well um and uh yeah any any last words you want to share before we uh before we finish up well, well, thank you for uh, for spending time with me, for uh, you know, for uh, being ready to listen to me. So I, I really appreciate that, and uh, for the people seeing this, I'm I'm open to any type of discussions. If you want to challenge uh, myself, if you want to add, if you want to contribute, I'm very open uh, to try to find the time to uh, uh, to to talk and, and think about these uh, these things. Um, as I truly believe, uh, uh, we have to deal, um, you know, in a, you know, also in a structured way on, 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 on many of these uncertainties. And so, thank you for for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Thomas.